Good evening and welcome to another online Bible study with Pastor Bill Brown uh, from Carmichael Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here and joining us. We pray this will be a blessing. We started last week with the subject of regeneration. We mentioned that's how we become children of God. Uh, we're birthed by God, begotten by God. And Jesus said without this birth, without this spiritual birth, without being born again, we cannot enter into or even see the kingdom of God. So we thought about those words that we've been using and try to explain some of them, just like when we used, again, regeneration, or we talk about adoption, um, being made full sons, or resurrection, we've been raised to walk in newness of life, or we were created in Christ Jesus. And through that, we saw this word several times, justified or made just. So tonight we're going to be looking at the doctrine, the biblical doctrine of justification. And I'm going to begin with um, Romans chapter 3 and verse 24, where he says, being justified freely. That word means without a cause. We are justified freely by his grace through, this is the means, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It's why we talk about several of these words that <clears throat> overlap and we'll talk about different aspects of our salvation. We're regenerated, that's an actual work that's in us. Adoption is kind of like a legal term like we have with justification here. This is not something that's done to us, but declared by God. And we're going to see that in it all is done through and by the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We're going to look at, first of all, the meaning of justification. Then we're going to look at the cost of justification. Then we want to look at the faith of justification. And then lastly, and we'll be brief here because, <laughs> to be honest with you, a lot of it is covered in the first three, but it has to do with the security of our justification. Once it's done, uh, is it done? Can it be undeclared? I mean, that's really what we're looking at. When we begin to understand regeneration, justification, adoption, sanctification, and even glorification, and those are some of the words that we'll be looking at the next several weeks, we find out something more about the work of Christ and how it applies to us. And in God's eyes, in God's mind, there is a work done to us, but there's also something else which is done in God's mind, which is this justification. You see that Christ was delivered. In fact, let's just put it up there in Romans chapter 4 and verse 25. He was delivered for our offenses. This was his purpose in coming. He was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Now that's fantastic to understand because we're going to be looking at, like I said, the meaning of justification. Now, justification considers or describes our verified legal right standing before God. Romans proves that in that particular verse, verse 4 there, and it speaks of our being raised to a new place with Christ. Our being made just is the declaration of God that we are right with him. Justification, when we look again at the meaning of it, we can look back into the Old Testament used some 71 times in 64 verses. It can be translated just, justified, or justification, and it means to be righteous. In the New Testament, we find it 66 times in 66 verses, and of course, it's a Greek word, but it means to be innocent or to render just or innocent. And it's really a twofold word. And a lot of people will try to make an argument as if they're opposed to one another. 
but you have both eternal justification and declarative justification. And all we mean by eternal justification is simply that which existed in the divine mind from everlasting. He, in fact, when we see that, we see something about it. It is a forensic or a judicial or legal terminology. And we see that in uh, the definition, it's an acquittal from imputed and evident guilt. So it's extremely important. We understand at least 2 Timothy 1.9. I can't even remember if I've got it. It should either come up next or it won't come up at all. But it says, who has saved us, talking about God, according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus when? Before the world began. So that's what we talk about when we're talking about that judicial or legal in the eternal mind of God. It's because it always has been. It's the same thing when we see in Romans chapter 8 about being justified and at the end glorified. Anybody here glorified yet? But it is such a certainty that it will happen that God states that we are glorified not will be but we are because it's his intent now in the declarative sense justification is that which takes place in time or in our own conscience upon us by or through faith god declares us it's not actually something that happens it's because we have been made righteous through christ that we are declared to be justified so it is a judicial act in which god pardons the sins of the sinner and receives him into favor and then considers him to be righteous so there's something else here justification is not the change of man's nature but if you remember regeneration is the change of our nature but justification is a change of our standing from guilty to uh, from guilty or condemned to that of pardoned or acquitted. Jesus Christ, through his imputed righteousness, has made us legally and certifi certifiably blameless. So you and I, if we are justified in Christ by faith, then we have a current and unchangeable right standing before God. That's what Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 tells us when he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. If you've been quickened, if you've been made alive, you will walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh, at least not all the time. So you see justification in its meaning it has to do with the fact that christ took not only our penalty and that condemnation and that guilt which belonged to us he literally took our place before the court of being guilty but he took our place and then imputed his righteousness to us he becomes guilty while we became just or righteous. So the idea of being justified or this term of justification goes way beyond the concept of pardon. And it presents the idea of a gift transferred to our account. You and I are justified by God or before God by Jesus Christ. He is the means and the matter is then settled forever. That's why when we understand this term of justification, then we can better understand the cost of justification. This was a work of Christ. It is what he did that justifies us. And this justification is through Christ alone. We used this before when we talked about redemption and have before again the idea of it. And we see it in 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19, where he says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received 
by tradition from your fathers, but how were they redeemed? But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. See, his righteousness, his being pure, is the reason why that we could be considered justified. Again, remember our text verse. It is through the redemption. How, what were we redeemed with? Not with silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And that redemption that is in Jesus Christ it said, remember our text again, that God freely, without a cause, justified us. You know what's neat when you begin to look at this and this justification that we can see and understand this cost and what it did, what it provided, that this justification of Jesus and what he provides, we see it being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus this ought to set it straight that our justification, number one, is complete and number two, it is comprehensive. By that I mean that when you begin to look at the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament, they had to keep coming back over and over again. But what I mean by that it was complete, when we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is Christ Jesus, it means there's nothing left for anyone else to do. It's complete. What do I mean by comprehensive? I mean that his death secured salvation for each and every one of God's elect. It is through Christ and through Christ's blood alone that you and I are justified or made clean. There's not a single sin that Christ didn't die for for you. That's what I mean too by comprehensive. Look with me at Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Where he says much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. Again every animal sacrifice in the Old Testament points to the Messiah, to Jesus Christ, who would shed his blood for you and I and save us from wrath, but also that all of while all of our sins would go to him, just like when those Old Testament saints would put their hands upon that animal, confess their sins, it was like as if they were imputing their sins to that lamb or that bullock or that turtle dove or that goat, whatever it might have been that was required by the law. And yet that innocent, pure animal, that innocence was ours. It pictured Jesus Christ. Look at Romans, not, or not Romans, but excuse me, Hebrews 9 and verse 12, where he says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. See, this is the cost that we're talking about. The meaning, making us right before God. The cost is the life and the blood of Jesus Christ. And by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. How rich is that? Now let's get into the faith of justification. Again, we are, and the Bible declares it quite clearly, that we are justified by faith alone through Christ alone. Now, that very statement, if you were back in England, and uh, let's just say you were there in Great Britain in England in the 15th century, that statement that I just made, that would get me arrested, and they would confiscate my land and my home and my citizenship. Well, you think the cost is high because we can't all gather or we have to wear a mask, or we have to... Do. Look at what the cost was for them to gather. If you got caught saying these particular truths, what are you going to do, deny them? I'm not. I'm so glad that I have the freedom to preach them to you. It may be that I have to preach through the internet, but God bless America that I can preach it still. I still could preach it even back then. I just end up having to realize I'm going to go to jail if I get caught for it. But uh, listen, what, what does the Bible say? Look at Romans 4 and verse 3. For what saith the scripture? 
Abraham believed God. He had faith in God. He believed that God would raise the Messiah from the dead and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He believed the promises of God. It's stated again when Paul is writing to the church of Galatia, the churches of Galatia, in Galatians chapter 2 and verse 16, he says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, you can't make yourself clean before God. You can't make yourself right before God. You're not going to be justified by any obedience, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Seems pretty clear that Abraham was not justified by works or by his obedience, not even his obedience to the call of God. He believed, it says, in the Lord, and it was counted to him for righteousness. But it wasn't his faith that justified him, but it is the object of his faith. What are you looking for? This is what the problem a lot of people have an insecurity about their salvation or their assurance. They're constantly looking at what they did. Well, if you're going to constantly look at what you did, you're looking to be justified by your own works. Listen, look to Jesus. He's the one that justifies. He's the one that makes it right. Look at Acts chapter 13, 38 through 39. It says, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man, not through what you've done, but through this man, is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law. You know, we are justified by faith in Christ's righteousness. Literally, we're justified by the faith of Christ. His works justify us. Our own works do not. But let me share you a little bit about that faith. Because I don't want to get too far away of thinking that, oh, well, then we, there's nothing for us to do. We're talking about a faith that saves. We're talking about a living faith. We're talking about a powerful faith. And I'm going to tell you, it is a faith that experiences the power of the gospel. I'm talking about a faith that experiences the life-changing power of the gospel. When we believe, that's being united to Christ. That's why we can say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. We can talk about being planted together in the likeness of his death so that we can be raised to walk in newness of life. That's the power of the gospel. This faith experiences the power of the gospel that we are buried with Christ, that we're raised with Christ, that we're crucified with Christ. We sit in the heavenlies with Christ. But this same justifying faith not only experiences the power of the gospel, it experiences the joy of the gospel. You know, when you think about your pardon from sin, that's pretty awesome. When you see your redemption, the word resplendent ought to come into our mind, seeing something so dramatic and so wonderful. But when you see our justification, it ought to be arresting and amazing and animating. Justification teaches us that we're not only pardoned and forgiven, but we have the legal standing of Jesus Christ before God. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not just amazing and arresting and animating. That's shocking that I could be considered to have the same standing as Christ. But I do because I'm in Christ and he makes me right. We are sons. We are just and we are right before God because his righteousness was imputed to us. Now, how could that not bring joy to our hearts 
and peace to our mind. You know, you think about it, how that God now looks at us and sees us as if we have never sinned. Wow. That's the power of the gospel. That is the joy of the gospel that this faith will really experience. And one last thing I want to bring up, this faith also experiences the satisfaction of the gospel. In other words, we rest in the gospel. We trust in the gospel. We have done all that we're going to do by believing, by resting, by trusting in what Christ has done. And we're kind of like what Ephesians 1 and 6 says. We understand we are accepted in the beloved. I'm not accepted outside of Christ, but in Christ. That's why when you think about the question that's in the book of Job, I'm not going to put it up there, but Job 25 and verse 4, use it a lot in talking to people where Job, the question was, how then can a man be justified with God? Talking about who man is and what man does. And you think about all of us, how then can a man be justified with God? Or how can a man be clean that is born of a woman since we're all sinners? Well, this is how. A man must be freely justified by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. The faith that justifies us before God is like Abraham's faith who staggered not at the promise of God. He believed and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. All of that, Paul said, was written for our instruction. In other words, it's of practical use for us. He says, to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was raised for our justification. Isn't that amazing? The meaning of it, being made right with God, being declared not guilty. The cost of it was the life and the blood of Jesus Christ. And the means of it was the fact, again, if you look at it, his righteousness being imputed to us. The faith of it, it's a living faith. It's an experiencing faith. One that experiences the power, the joy, and the satisfaction of the gospel. But I want to end with a very, to me, solid note. Doesn't take a lot to me to have to look at. People have to really dig around in other verses that have nothing to do with this subject to try to prove otherwise. But I'm going to tell you, there is a security in this justification because it didn't come by my efforts. It didn't come because of something our, I did. And let's lay it out first by showing you Romans chapter 8 and verse 33 where he says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. It is God that declares a man righteous. And God's declaration is so certain and so absolute, this statement is that it cannot be questioned or challenged. Need we bring up the, the accuser of the brethren, old Satan, the devil himself, where he brings accusation? Yes, indeed he does. And we would have to say guilty. But instead of us, it's Christ who stands up and says, yes, he is guilty, but I was nailed to the cross of Calvary for him. I suffered the wrath and the penalty of God's justice. I was buried and I was raised again for their justification. You see, God has not overlooked any charge that could be brought against us. Nothing indeed. And there is nothing that needs now to be changed in our justification. Every sin, this is the security of our justification, because God said every sin has been dealt with. A complete justification has been declared. We have been cleansed from our sin, but we have also been made righteous and declared just in Jesus Christ. You rest in the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. It is God's work, like regeneration, 
We have been begotten of God. Well, it is God that justifies. It is God who freely, without a cause, by his grace, justifies us. You and I have the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ, and there is no higher authority and no one more holy than our Savior. And by faith, we understand this decision has been rendered over us. Praise God. Hallelujah. I have been made right. There's no condemnation and there is no possibility of condemnation coming upon those who are in Christ Jesus. Our justification is not conditional, but it is a gift of grace dependent upon the good pleasure of the sovereign will of God. Let the accuser of the brethren come. Let the accusations come. Jesus will stand before the throne of God and declare that all charges must be dropped because all of the ordinances, Colossians 2 and 14, he said all those ordinances were written against him and nailed to his cross. And it is by one offering forever. In fact, I ought to just put that verse up there right now from Hebrews chapter 10. By one offering himself. What does he do? He hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Those who have been set apart by God the Holy Spirit. Regenerated by the Spirit. Made righteous by the Spirit and declared just before God by this offering. I pray that you might know your right standing before God. And if you are not at this time right before God, you can be made right before God by believing that God has raised up Jesus from the dead for you, for me. Do you have that living faith? Do you have that ability right now to turn away from self and what your efforts are and look to Christ for your life? Justification. I barely scratched the surface, just like when we barely scratched the surface of regeneration, looking at the metaphoric and the symbolic truths that are here. There's nothing symbolic in justification, but there's one thing that I do want to just mention that Jesus when there were those who wondered about this subject and he proposed a question and he said, which man went home justified? Two men went into the sanctuary. One prayed thus with himself. I thank thee, O God, that I'm not like all these other men. I'm not a sinner like them. Well, we know that didn't come to grips with the truth, or he didn't come to grips with the truth. But then he presented another man who would not even approach, but stood afar off, smote his breast, and said, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Which home, which went home justified? It was that latter man. The man who realized he could do nothing on his own. He had to utterly, absolutely depend upon God and his work on our behalf, which was through in and by Jesus Christ, God incarnate. Won't you trust him for your justification? Wouldn't you like to find that God would declare you just and righteous? through Jesus Christ. I pray that this has been a blessing to you, a help to you, and certainly an assurance to your faith. In Christ's name, Lord bless you all. Amen.